Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Brewer, for the opportunity to talk today. My name is Adam Ganser. I'm the Executive Director of New Yorkers for Parks. We have the Playfair Coalition, which is over 450 organizations across the city, including the Union, DC 37, and many of the folks you see here. Um, our parks are under siege. Like every agency, parks took a 5% hit. The result is loss of key programs, a hiring freeze that will result in hundreds of lost workers. As if that weren't enough, the Parks Department received a cut that is actually happening in a different agency, in the Human Resources Administration. HRNA cut the POPs program, which will result in 1,450 additional workers lost. Uh, as an aggregate, these cuts amount to a 12% cut to the Parks Department. Put bluntly, Parks has, been, has taken more cuts than any other agency from an administration that's strongly committed to invest in our park system. The mayor and nearly every city council member, including you all, uh, has supported an increase in the parks budget, pledging to get to the goal of 1% for parks. Instead, parks and New Yorkers are getting railroaded. Some context, this is happening when the parks department has been underfunded for 40 years, when the parks department has fewer workers now than it did last year. And what's more infuriating, fewer workers than it did before COVID. What will these cuts mean for New Yorkers? All we have to do is go back three years to the pandemic when we saw similar cuts, trash in our parks, lawns unmowed, bathrooms uh, closed, or frankly disgusting. Not enough staff to keep the beaches and pools fully open and maintained, unsafe conditions for parks workers and unsafe parks for New Yorkers and their families. What's more is that despite parks taking more than its share of the cuts in this round, the mayor is proposing an additional five to 10% cuts to the agency. This is a systematic defunding of an agency that is operating on a shoestring budget. I know these cuts are coming from the top, but I also wanna make one other point. For the past many years, the council itself has funded roughly 300 positions called play fair positions. Those were crucial because every year this happens coming from the top and those positions would sort of create a buffer. You haven't done that the last couple of years. I know we're a little ahead of next year's budget, but I wanna put that in here because it's super important that we have that kind of a cushion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Merritt Birnbaum. I'm the president and CEO of Riverside Park Conservancy. Uh, we're over one of the 450 organizations that's part of the Playfair Coalition. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you. Uh, on behalf of how the cuts will impact just one of the 1,942 public parks in New York City. Uh, Riverside Park Conservancy works through a maintenance and operations agreement with NYC Parks to care for five parks along six miles, 400 acres, along the west side of Manhattan from 59th Street to 181st Street. We're fortunate to have built a 35-year history that leverages thousands of hours of volunteer time and financial resources to supplement the city's dwindling workforce. We recognize that the vast majority of public parks in our city do not have the benefit of conservancy groups. So our situation in Riverside only underscores how dire the current round of cuts and any future cuts will be for the parks in our most vulnerable communities. In addition to its own cuts, as Adam said, the Parks Department is the victim as other agencies strive to meet their PEG mandates. Uh, HRA is saving $59 million from its own budget by cutting the Parks Opportunity Program a jobs program that has existed for three decades and currently employs 1,400 essential parks workers. So to put details on the magnitude of the crisis today in Riverside Park, over half of our frontline staff in the park are part of the POPs program. Um, cutting this workforce will essentially decimate the services that the Parks Department provides in our park. So it will effectively eliminate 50% of the trash pickups, 50% of the lawn mowing, 50% of the gravity or graffiti removal, and 50% of the bathroom cleanings. In smaller parks across the city, a cut of this size is equivalent to just eliminating these types of services. To eliminate the seasonal positions from an agency that has relied on this workforce for decades is to cripple an already broken system. City Hall says there are no more layoffs, but not filling thousands of necessary jobs, you are not only keeping more New Yorkers unemployed, you are actively harming the remaining parks workers who have no way to compensate for their absent colleagues. 
And as Adam said, we know what this looks like. Overflowing toilets, graffiti covered playgrounds, discarded needles. Um, our parks are a direct reflection of our city's commitment to the health and happiness of our residents. A revered park advocate once said, they're the lungs of the city. Well, the city is on life support. Don't cut off the oxygen. We adamantly oppose further cuts to parks. No need to, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather Lubav. I'm the Executive Director of City Parks Foundation. Thank you all for sticking with us. Um, we are a citywide nonprofit that encourages New Yorkers to use and care for their neighborhood parks and open spaces. And we also are the administrator of the New York City Green Fund, a private campaign to support grassroots stewardship efforts in under-resourced communities. We are a proud member of the Playfair for Parks Coalition and the Hashtag Y15 campaign. I'm here on behalf of the thousands of New Yorkers who volunteer through Partnerships for Parks the program we jointly manage with the Parks Department. And I'm here on behalf of the millions of New Yorkers who might not volunteer, but who rely on their local parks for their gyms, their classrooms, their concert venues, their gathering spaces, and their respites. We run a very lean operation to coordinate with the agency so that 26,000 people can volunteer in parks. I could talk about the five full-time and the four seasonal positions that will go unfilled, making it virtually impossible for us to sustain this current level of volunteer engagement. Or I could talk about the accumulation of vacancies within the agency that will make it even harder for us to contract, secure permits, or purchase tools and supplies like gloves and trash bags that we need for volunteer projects. Even though the success of the administration's Let's Green NYC initiative largely depends on our ability to organize and staff these volunteer projects. But I'm really here to talk about the 300 plus full-time already vacant and frozen positions plus the loss of 1,450 frontline maintenance workers in the POP program. Combined, these lost positions will result in devastating consequences in our parks and will put an enormous burden on the remaining staff who are already severely burned out from years of underfunding for the agency. You may recall the trash piling up in parks during the early pandemic and the corresponding constituent complaints. We cannot go back to that. Volunteers are not a replacement for staff nor is private fundraising a replacement for the public dollars that by right should be used adequately to fund our park system, which with libraries is our city's most democratic and critical community resource. We make neighborhoods livable. We are undermining climate change mitigation right now as we experience more flooding. We are compromising our safety. We are subjecting visitors to trash and needles, and we are reducing access to fountains, sprinklers, and pools. Our parks and city deserve better. Thank you. I'm Christina Taylor, Deputy Director for the Van Cortlandt Park Alliance. Uh, thank you so much for holding this important hearing. Uh, Van Cortlandt Park Alliance is also a proud member of the Play Fair for Parks Coalition. This administration's proposed cuts will devastate our park system. Year after year, New York City Park staff does more with less. This past summer, they once again stepped up and took care of 30,000 acres of parks with limited resources. The staff is already stretched too thin. They are tired and frustrated, and so are we. New York City Park staff need more resources to do the work that the public expects and deserves, not less. And yet we're looking at losing 350 jobs through a hiring freeze and losing another 1,450 jobs through the discontinuation of the Parks Opportunity Program, limiting nearly 60% of the mobile parks cleaning crews. How are park staff supposed to keep our parks clean? How is Van Cortlandt Park staff supposed to keep our 1,146-acre park tidy with 20 fewer employees during the busy summer season? How can parks continue to provide clean, safe, and beautiful open spaces for you? Plain and simple, they cannot. To be sure with these budget cuts, it is New Yorkers who will suffer. Without enough staff, playgrounds will not open on time, if at all. Bathrooms will not be clean and will not stay open during late summer nights. Fields will not be groomed for sports, graffiti will not be removed, garbage will not be picked up, trash will fester, and vermin will take over. Trucks and other vehicles will fall into further disrepair. Parks Enforcement Patrol already understaffed will be practically non-existent. Pools will not be fully staffed, so you can forget about special programs like Learn to Swim. It's just not a pretty picture. Parks are an essential part of city life. 14% of all city land is parkland. There are nearly 2,000 parks sites in New York City, and yet the Parks Department is chronically underfunded. With this round of cuts, there will be nothing left, and yet this administration keeps chipping away. 
Enough is enough. Please say no to the cuts. Join us and let this administration know that New York City Parks budget cannot be cut any further. Thank you.